Hello, my name is Paul Weiss and I'm with Eucalyptus Technical Marketing. This is part one of a short two-part simple video series to show installing Eucalyptus using SilverEye on our VMware Workstation Cloud Sandbox from the previous post. In this video we will look at a complete installation with no compromise other than system resources since we are installing in two virtual machines. This is an unsupported configuration, but using this configuration you will have all of the functionality of a much larger installation, just not the capacity. As you might remember from the previous post when we were building our cloud sandbox, we need to make a configuration change in the virtual network editor. If you go under preferences on the menu bar and go down to virtual network editor, under VMNet 8 or the NATed network, we need to turn off DHCP. So let's get started installing. Uh, if you need to pause this video to look at the details, please do so. Uh, first thing we need to do is create a virtual machine for a node controller. This is a CentOS 64-bit uh, virtual machine. We will make a couple of edits to that virtual machine once we get uh, uh, the virtual machine created. We just selected our SilverEye CD that we downloaded off the, the SilverEye site. And we're just going to name our virtual machine. We're going to change the disk size to 60 gigs. It is thin provision in VMware Workstation, so it's okay. And I just like one big uh, file just so I can move it around easy. Uh, we're going to change the memory to 4 gigs of memory. The big secret sauce really here is uh, we're going to make it a couple extra processors and cores per processor, but this checkbox here for the VT and, and with EPT, so that's going to allow us to do the nested, nested virtualization. Basically, the node controller is going to run CentOS with KVM, and we'll be allowed to create virtual machines, 64-bit virtual machines uh, on our cloud. I have taken uh, some of the the, the, the slow parts out of the video, you can watch the timer and see actually where we're at with the, uh, the installation. But first thing we're going to do is, is create the node controller. As you may have noticed, I've paused the video during lengthy install and configuration parts that require no input. And the next part is just uh, confirming our storage standard CentOS installation routine. We need to pick our languages. We need to choose our time zone. And we'll put in the root password and confirm it. And our installation is going to run now. Again, I've paused the video. We'll pick it right back up uh, just before reboot. Okay, we're back. The installation is complete. Now we just have to go and configure. We log in as root with the root password that we said earlier. And the script will run and just ask us a few questions for the node controller. It's pretty simple. And we're going to say we want to configure our network. And this is just the standard uh, little UI for configuring the network. We want to change it from DHCP to, to a static IP address based on our network. In this case, uh, we did change the network settings. If you remember back from the last post when we were building our lab, that's where we got all this network information from. Next, the installer is going to ask us for our DNS information. And we're also going to add the host name in here. It'll ask us, but we're just going to put it in here anyway, so we don't have to come back to the screen. So just nc.vlab.local and standard Google uh, primary and secondary DNS servers. Uh, 
the installer is going to ask us if we'd like to change the host name, but we've already done that. We've already set it, so it's fine. We want to enable NTP. NTP is extremely important in cloud, especially in distributed systems. When you have multiple systems talking back and forth, it, we make sure that all the keys, and it's for security reasons. And we're going to run manage no VLAN. You could run manage mode here also, but we're going to run manage mode, and we're done. As a good system administrator, I just want to make sure I do a reboot, make sure that my settings are persistent. And we're just going to log in and make sure the eucalyptus-nc service is up and running and do a network test real quick. Please check out part two as we'll install the cloud controller and finish up uh, installing our eucalyptus cloud. Thanks for watching.